And back on the Steve Malzberg Show, if you're just joining, I'm Rick Unger filling in for Steve today, who is out on assignment and will be back tomorrow. Join now. I got to tell you, a distinguished fellow at the Washington and Jefferson College, author of a book that I, is absolutely fascinating. It's called The Professor in the Cage, Why Men Fight and Why We Like to Watch. Welcome, Jonathan Gottschall. Jonathan. Thank you for having me on, Rick. What an interesting book. I, you know, I was trying to think about how to set it up. I'm going to let you do it. Okay. Uh, I guess the place to start would be at the beginning. You know, it's a few, a few years ago, I'm an adjunct instructor at a small liberal arts college. Which, by the way, I spent my first that year That was at. amazing. I just yep. learned that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and they threw you out, and I was kind of trying to get <laughs> myself not, thrown you're out. You're not supposed to tell the audience <laughs> that, but yeah, they did. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm uh, pushing 40. Um, but I never managed to find my way onto the tenure track, and I was kind of finally admitting to myself that I wasn't going to. And so uh, I was sort of at midlife, and I needed a new path through life. And one day, I'm at office hours, I walk out into the lounge, I look out the front window, and this new business has opened up across the street. It's a cage fighting gym. Mm -hmm. And I watched the guys there fighting in the cage, and I was ambushed by this sense of envy. I'm like, Envy. Envy, yeah. Like, you know, they seem so alive I mean, in there. you're built pretty well, but you're not the biggest guy in the world. No, and I've never been in a fight before. Uh, I'm by no means a tough guy. But I admired their bravery. You know, the way they're in that cage. They're alive. They're, they're, they're taking chances. And I'm back in my office cubicle sort of rotting away. And I had this thought, you know, uh, wouldn't it be funny if I went across the street and joined them? And so... A couple months later, I worked up the courage to cross the street, to get in some fights, but mainly to get material for, for this book, to, to a book about why men fight and why yeah, we and, watch. Yeah, and your observations about what leads men to enjoying violence, to wanting to participate in violence. Tell us about the monkey dance. The monkey dance is my name. Well, if, you, if you've ever seen like a nature video, sure. and you've seen uh, a couple elephant seals squaring off in the surf, or a couple of rams bashing skulls on a hillside, Biologists call that ritual combat. It's a process animals have evolved for fighting it out, figuring out who's bigger, but you, tougher. But you make the point that even in the monkey dance, there's a set of rules. There's a there's it's rules. Not, it's not it's free all, for It's all. always about diminishing violence. It's not about giving free reign to violence. It's about finding ways to settle a dispute, to thrash out a hierarchy in ways that fall, out, fall short of all-out conflict. And the monkey dance is my name for human varieties of ritual combat. Everything from deadly duels to verbal duels to the play fighting of boys to sports, even rough sports like mixed martial arts. Interesting. So, so you go and you, you join up with this. How many times did you get your you-know-what kicked? I got my you-know-what kicked a lot, a lot. You know, as you say, I'm not a big guy. I'm not a particularly tough guy. Going in, I was awfully timid. And it's dangerous to be timid. You know, you're always on your back foot and the other guy's coming forward. Um, and so it was a rough process, and I definitely left the book in worse shape than I came in. You know, I uh, finally gave it up after about three years, and I gave but it you, up. But you stayed with it that long. I did. I, I, I expected to fight for a year and train for a year to have a formal official fight and then quit the second it was over. But I ended up really liking it, and I, I liked the camaraderie. I liked the sparring. In fact, I liked it more than anything I've done you liked in my it life. Than teaching. Uh, yeah, in some ways, yeah, in some ways. Uh, there, there's a lot less of the uh, nonsense. You know, in the, in, in, the, in the fighting gym, everything's truthful. There's no way to fake. There's no way to lie. Um, whereas, you know, in your normal working life, there's all kinds of uh, nonsense. So, so let, me, let me go global on sure. this. You know, what you seem to learn that you portray in the book is that we keep things under control by having rules. Yeah. For, for fighting. And yeah. that this is what attracts men in particular yeah. to violent sport, etc. Now, when you look at the world, I mean, it used to be that wars were fought in a very organized fashion. They lined up. They, yeah. they had rules. Yeah. And now, in an, in an era where it's all terrorist attack, etc., there doesn't seem to be rules anymore. That's what does that point. say about our future? Um, well, the world has been getting safer and safer. Uh, not more and more dangerous. So rates of homicide are down in, in most developed countries, like radically down. Uh, the, your likelihood of dying in war has never been lower. So on, on the whole, it, it's, it's a good story. What was interesting to me about the connections between sport and warfare is they're very hard to see nowadays because cultures elaborated them yes. in all sorts yeah, of ways. Yeah, yeah. But if you go back to, in history, you go back to band and tribal societies, 
very, very clearly, clearly warlike sports. The, the Greek Olympics is the best really example. Really a fascinating book, man. It really is. I uh, got to say goodbye. Yes. Got to move on. But Jonathan okay. Gottschall, uh, I highly <laughs> recommend this book. If you're a woman and you want to understand, guys, read it. If you're a man, you're going to love it. Jonathan Gottschall. Uh, up next, it's the Closing Bell Report with Newsmax's own editor and financial intelligence expert, Jazz Yeston. Don't go anywhere.